down, 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 five, 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 five hundred. All right, so I want to start the podcast off by kind of going through your journey as an artist because I know a lot of people listening are probably at a point where you were back in like 2012, yeah, but when you were just starting off. So a lot of people probably want to know to how you, you know, got to where you are today. So right, yeah. If you want to start at like your beginnings, and we can go from there. Yeah. So I mean, I've always been like a creative type of person I hate to say that but I've always been like you know having the need to doodle whenever I can or you know put things together or just like think of creative solutions for stuff but uh, you know as a kid like especially growing up like where I was from but I feel like it's a little like a lot of people can relate to this like people just don't take art that seriously so like as a kid you don't think it's like a legitimate way of living life you right. think it's like a hobby right it's nothing more than a hobby and that's how i, I was for a long time yeah and i just want to interject real quick yeah yeah i of as a kid i always said like when i grow up i want to be an artist or like a cartoonist right and like then in high See, school that's cool yeah yeah and then in high school it just like went away and i wasn't really interested in doing it anymore because i didn't think it was a you know real career path yeah, now that, dude, now that you say that, I think my dream, like, my initial dreams, like, died pretty quick, because I, like I told you earlier in the night, me and my friend would, like, sit up in our treehouse and make cartoons, like, mm -hmm. uh, what's that, Captain uh, Underpants? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. That yeah. was, like, our biggest inspiration at the time. Mm -hmm. We, like, would read that and, like, think we were the two kids, and then we would, like, make stuff like that. That's awesome. And, uh... Yeah, but then I like for some reason didn't want to become a like a like a cartoonist at all. Yeah. Or for Pixar or any of that. I just like wanna play basketball. <laughs> I wanted to be an NBA player. Oh like, my god. Yeah, like some crazy stuff like that growing up. Yeah. But that just like goes to show like like now that I'm like actually thinking about it, like I probably just push those dreams aside because I was like obviously there's no future in art but there's a future in sports like that's the way my mind was thinking mm, back then because right. that just like showed how much people value that like those specific things you know yeah that's kind of like the way it was sorry but, like, oh no you're fine all through though like high school you know right and i'm sure it's the same way with a lot of people you know yeah where the arts just get underlooked you know it's the they're cutting funding still for it you know exactly um but yeah like so i mean i've always been around art and like doing stuff with that and me and my girlfriend like used to sit next to each other in painting class in like 10th grade and she would like try to get me to turn in projects and like finish my projects but I would like never finish projects or anything because I like I said I just like wouldn't take it serious you know yeah um yeah. I probably should take it a little more serious than that <laughs> um but yeah so I mean it was always around and then when I went to college, I kind of like, I first went to school for business because I was like, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I just like, it seemed like the universal, like smart or like safe decision to make. Right. Like I'm going to do something along business, so mm -hmm. I might as well go for it. But anyways, that didn't last long. And after like a year, I just realized like, I wasn't good at traditional school. So I was like, I'm going to try art school because you know, I had a few friends that were in like graphic design programs, my girlfriend being one, and uh, I started doing graphic design at the school in Detroit called Wayne State, and I would like commute there um, for a year, and uh, it was it was all right. I design graphic design and design in general are. I I mean, obviously, I can respect it, but I I don't have an eye for it as I do with painting and like. I, I don't have like that structured type of thinking, I guess. Right. Um, like my girlfriend does, or like some other designers, but. Mm hmm. You're just like more sporadic. I still enjoyed it, and it was definitely better than like school or business. But um, I remember I took one oil painting class, and my teacher, and I wish I knew his name, but he was just super talented. Like, 
he painted like these surreal settings like in Cuba that reminded him of his childhood and he had like his dad being like this <clears throat> completely like shadowed figure that like wears a top hat and like a cloak <laughs> yeah. and like these beautiful like car scenes of Cuba with like street art on the walls and then like these like classic American cars like mm -hmm. there so it was like amazing work and I remember like the one project that the only project I remember from my whole time there was a painting project and he does have <clears throat> I'm sorry <laughs> oh, <you're fine. laughs> creative control though of, it, of like the painting Okay. Which was like so cool because right. like, I've been like waiting to do it. I don't really remember what I painted. It was probably like terrible anyways, but <laughs> it, I was just like, that's so cool. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like back, I used to just dread critiques and stuff like in drawing class because my, I would always just get, I don't know, like my stuff, they would say would be like too cartoony and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I don't know what that ever meant, but, um, I just, I was never really into like the technical approach of uh, certain aspects of drawing, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, still to this day, like I, I respect realism and stuff, but I just don't have fun with it personally. Um, right. It's like building a cabinet for me as opposed to like, uh, like going for a hike or something, right. you know? Or designing the cabinet. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so anyways, I, I had started doing a lot of freelance work, like, at the time. Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy, because, like, it's, I haven't even, like, thought of this stuff in a while, but I had started doing a lot, or, like, reflect on this part of, you know, right. of my life. But um, I started doing a lot of freelancing stuff, and, like, a lot of it was, like, um, album art and single work and stuff like that mm -hmm. for just, like, rappers and... Um, other artists online and like I would do like some promo posters and stuff like that yeah um, I remember like one of the early ones was I did uh, like a mixtape for no name at the time oh did you yeah it's like the that. first like I think it was like the telephone EP like you it's probably on the line somewhere and you can mm -hmm. find the artwork but like it's not like on streaming services or anything oh, okay. But I did not know that. That's yeah, crazy. and she was like really cool. It was like the first time I got like, um, are the lights to me? Are they? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think we're so. chilling. But anyways, uh, it was like the first time I had gotten like a, you know, like a, like a commission payment from like an artist that I admire. I think I'm pretty sure that was the first one. Okay. Yeah. And when was this? I'm just curious. Uh, that was probably that was probably. Uh, 2013 maybe okay 14 the latest word mate no maybe it was f I don't know <laughs> I'm trying to think when I graduated high school and then I'm trying to think of like my college years right maybe 14 or 15 now I'm thinking about it okay that probably makes more sense because I did a lot of that <clears throat> work around 2015 2016 but like I said since that was earlier it was probably around then right but yeah I was just doing a bunch of stuff I did like covers for like just like a bunch of like artists that I admired at the time. That was kind of mm -hmm. like, I don't know, like it felt cool to get like that validation from them. It was also nice because it was like helping my art reach that audience of like people that I guess were, I thought like were similar to me. You right. Know? And uh, yeah, I was getting paid for it to do it. Yeah. So it was like nice. <laughs> so anyways, like I, I started doing quite a few commissions in college and uh, at the time, like, you know, like, with commissions, like, you'd get paid, like, a like a decent amount. So then, like, it kind of encouraged me to, like, the thought of, like, me dropping out of school and kind of just, like, focusing on that full time was always, like, lingering, you know? Because mm -hmm. it was, like, finally something I had found that I was, like, passionate about and, like, getting paid for, you know? Right. Like, it felt so good. Something that someone told me was a hobby my whole life mm -hmm. now was, like, making me a living, you yeah. know? The dream is starting to... Not to making a living at that time, but still just, like, providing those, like, basic things, you know? Right. But, um... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was starting to all come together, almost. Yeah. Um, and that's, like, around the time, I think, uh... I think that's around the time ASAP Rocky had found my work on Instagram, and he had hit me up on, like, DM and was like, Yo, I, like enjoy your work or mm -hmm. something along those lines like 
we started like talking and then I remember like all like that conversation happened so quick to then I was like FaceTiming and then next thing you know like three days later I was like flying out to his uh like his studio in New York that's so sick and like yeah so like that was like the first like glimpse of like and like I had remembered too at that point like I don't really tell people this but like I think it's cool like to manifest certain things and uh I remember I'd like tweeted three months prior that I wanted to work with him and then like oh, shit like stuff like that had happened so it was like it felt larger than life right it like felt like you know what I was doing like I wasn't like crazy for thinking like of these big dreams you know right and I think like right after that had happened um I had also dropped out of college and kind of pursued that full time um mm -hmm. but anyways he just like brought me out was talking about doing some album art for the art he had at the time because that was like right before he dropped that multiply song oh right so uh, it was like he took like a two uh like a two-year break mm -hmm. and then he dropped that along with the i remember that we were pretty far yeah to snip it so it was so far yeah like i like i was at his house that weekend like his birthday weekend he was showing me this stuff like saying like i want you to do like this album art like solo art for all that and i'm just like wow this is like too good to be true you know yeah. like, this is like some crazy stuff that's, that's like happening level. you yeah. know like yeah. i i think i told you like danny brown had walked in the next day and like mm -hmm. i had finally gotten to like meet him and he was just such a cool guy and was like like anyone from detroit who knows someone from detroit in like that type of situation i don't know it's just like there's like a common one respect and just like wow like we're, we're like actually out of detroit doing stuff you yeah. know like that's it's, awesome. it's it was like really cool at the time and uh yeah just like being in that environment and like having rocky like rocky was a great uh person to be around he was like really like uh it's like he would have like inspired a lot of the ideas i had and like he would like text me after i would like post paintings and be like yo that piece is like really tight and stuff that's so awesome. I was like yeah it was like bigger than life like to have like someone i'd like looked up to like growing up like like text me about my work like that you know was, yeah try to come true yeah i mean long story short with all that like that had ended up falling through just mm -hmm. like he was going through stuff and i think like it didn't go about the best way like like i i've never really like spoke on it but like he definitely kind of like left me out hanging with that like because yeah. i had like these ideas that like uh like one that i was doing this album art and was going to be comp compensated for all this time i was like putting into it mm -hmm. and two that like maybe my life was about to like change in a way to where I could make this like you know I could drop out of college and make this something that I do full time right like I could kind of see like you know that almost becoming a reality yeah. so I guess like when stuff didn't go through with that it was just like a really like kind of like depressing moment for me yeah just because it was like that was something that I thought I wanted so much at the time, which I did want at the time, but I think the way things had went, and now that I look back on it, I'm so happy it went the way it did. Like, because of that, I never would have, that, like that happening made me realize that I didn't need or could rely on a cosign per se, mm -hmm. and I just had to do it myself. Right. And that's kind of like gave me the freedom to say, hey, like, I'm just gonna start creating what I want to. I think I, if I didn't stop doing commissions, I just stopped focusing it on it as much, and I started doing like a lot more like personal creations. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I got like more involved in like what art is all about. You know, right, as opposed to like uh, a sort of escape, I guess, at the time, or like yeah. a way out. Yeah, and if it had, if it went through, like you could have stuck. been stuck just doing cover art. Like yeah, you would have. And that, nothing against that, but that's just, I don't think my path, I don't think right. that was ever the plan. Um, yeah, like. I mean, clearly not, not <laughs> making stuff like this, so. Yeah. Which is just on a whole other level. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, 
I wanted to go back real quick because yeah. I wanted to ask you. Um, you said you started doing cover art for people. Um, how did you get to the like? How did you get to that point where like ASAP Rocky and No Name are hitting you up? Like, I think it was just through Instagram and stuff. But I did leave yeah. out a key out like a key point to that part of my success was I did have a manager at the time um, that I have never really talked about either. But like, we had we were doing like a lot of work together and he was in London mm -hmm. so like he would find me certain commissions like he helped me get like I think Rocky had found it through a feature I had did with Complex back in the day that my manager had found me okay where I like recreated these like slim uh, uh what's his name I don't want to butcher it like Slim K I think the dude who like chops and screws the songs and stuff okay yeah but, I've heard the name <clears throat> yeah, and I'm that's like right in like, you know, his like type of interest, you know, so maybe he saw that and then he reached out through that. Mm -hmm. It was like right around that time too, so uh it it could make sense, but Yeah, it, it does. I was doing a lot of cover art at the time on Instagram and um this was like before like I'm sorry, but I don't know if I was like maybe I just wasn't aware of like a, an art scene occurring at the time, but to my knowledge, like, there wasn't really that many artists, like, posting on Twitter at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I remember there was, like, Will Prince. Like, I don't know if that name rings a bell, but, like... Will Prince, you said? Yeah. I don't think I'm familiar with him. And, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> he was, like, an OG, like, this young kid from the UK who was doing all these, like, portraits, mm -hmm. digital portraits of people on, like, the tablet years before, like... You know, like, he, like, right. really, like, created that lane, and it was, like, crazy. Like, um, we had the same manager, though. Okay. Um, at the time. And he both found you through Twitter? Or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I saw the success that him and Will, like, were working up, and I was like, mm -hmm. I need someone to represent me like that. So then I had reached out to him. Right. Because, um, okay. like I said, he was in the UK, and that's kind of why that had fallen through, because it... It's just like tough to do business so on far separate, apart. yeah, time schedules and stuff yeah, like that. Totally. But um, yeah, I mean that. I like that's so far back that like, that those are like really the early days of like, right. Me creating and so then like I said, since the Rocky thing happened, uh, I kind of like realized like I I wanted to take it a different route, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, just like really do things myself. I, like all these people I had looked up to at the time, like had created their own platforms for themselves, you know? Right. Um, so I was like really inspired to do that too. Um, so yeah, I, would, I just kind of like, let's see, like I said, it's been a while. But yeah. I would, I would just like work a lot in my room. And at that time I was like trying to post something every day or like every other day just to be consistent mm -hmm. you know like this was like you know 2014-15-ish right you know? um, but yeah I mean that helped my work like get in some certain eyes at the time but also like I said it was just like in a different industry I guess you know mm -hmm. um, like I was saying like after um, after I realized like I didn't want to do cover art and like commissions mm -hmm. and I kind of wanted to like hopefully like I was still doing commissions because I was still trying to make a way of living while doing like a few side jobs at the time like in high school I worked at Tim Hortons and then I did landscaping for like I forgot if it was a summer or two summers it felt like two summers landscaping <laughs> <laughs> jobs are horrible yeah, yeah it was, they're, they're horrible and then they're great at moments you know that's like, true I like being outside but then like those so certain days are it's terrible and it just so drains rough. you yeah. you know that manual labor just so drains rough. you <laughs> so and that's why i'm the type of person and i have a lot of respect for people that can work like jobs and then come home and create too mm -hmm. and have the energy to do that um so totally. like because I'll, I'll just yeah and uh you know luckily at the time I, like i said i was in college so like i was able to kind of like do this on the side and right. like kind of just focus on that which was probably why my grades were suffering mm -hmm. um but then like 
they were suffering actually <laughs> because of that. And then I just kind of realized like my heart's not in school, but my heart's really in art. I'm gonna stop this. And then uh, yeah, I just I started creating every day, and uh, you know like years passed after that, and uh, I realized like kind of like the next thing that I wanted was the next thing I wanted to accomplish as an artist, or like the next like goal I had to set for myself was like to have a, sh a show of some sort like to put my art in public spaces because it was existing so long on like an online setting that like I just wanted people to like see it in person you yeah. know because I personally like enjoy that aspect of physical art mm -hmm. you know so um it's a whole other experience it's a whole other person. experience and that's what I'm and that's what I realized too was by going through a few shows you know, I remember um, I had, like went up to Art uh, Basel or right. Basel. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. <laughs> like that place. <laughs> no, like I, like I, yeah, I don't like those types of places. Although who knows, I would maybe be in one of those places one day. Yeah, but, probably. Maybe. Um, I realized those were like a weird arena, though, of like. It was like a super art store, like sort of like count kind of how I like imagined the auction houses being. Right. Um, but I just like I don't. I guess I don't like. I maybe I'm just. I want the attention to be on me when I'm showing my work too much. But I like having like shows with just my work and a few others. I guess. Mm -hmm. um, or at the time I did, I thought that was really important. Uh, yeah. I mean that makes sense. But yeah, yeah. So I mean, I remember one summer in particular. I think it was a summer, but one time in particular, me and my girlfriend and uh, my friend, we had heard about a Hebrew Brantley show out in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was his first solo show, but it might have might have been like his first big solo show. Parade Day Rain, I think, was the show title, and I forgot what year that was. Maybe 2016, 17. Mm -hmm. But um, I went to that show, and that was like kind of my first time, I think, going to like an opening weekend or night of a show, especially like with the big artists. Like Hebrew was there, and like right. seeing Hebrew in person is like seeing like Michael Jordan in person. One, because he's a legend, like, and mm -hmm. what he does, and two, he's just he's like tall as hell. <laughs> yeah, like he could like, yeah, he's like tall as hell. Damn, I didn't. I don't think I knew that. Yeah, yeah, like he could exactly. totally play like ball probably if you wanted to. <laughs> like he's so tall. He's yeah. probably like six, seven, six, eight. Like I remember taking a picture next to him and I just like looked like such a, a little boy. <laughs> a little, <laughs> little kid. <laughs> next to him. Yeah. Um, but I remember um, going to that show and just being amazed by the works that I saw on the walls and the scale of them, his style, his characters. He had his flyboy stat. Uh, sculpture like hanging from the ceiling he was just a really humble guy that was like talking to supporters and like signing their sketchbooks and like mm -hmm. offering advice and I remember like like one specific moment where like someone had asked him for um, like just advice as an artist mm -hmm. and he said don't listen to anyone's advice and like I don't know why, but I like had always remembered that because like my stubbornness as an artist in particular, like, right, it's like so perfect for yeah, yeah. I just like needed to hear it at that moment. I um, think I remember you telling me that quote, but I like it. Yeah, a lot. yeah, I love it, and uh, I, I yeah, like I, I'll always remember that. Um, and then that's kind of like when I knew like that's I wanted to be in that type of like arena or setting like with shows and like right. having gallery shows like, with these pieces that they're like tell a story like cohesively or just like individually mm -hmm. um it was like a powerful experience like we've like we said seeing it in person like i i had seen hebert's work online before but like seeing it to scale and like you know being a painter too just you can see the detail and like certain things and it it makes you feel like 
I don't know, like, not that, like, you can do that, but, like, you can do that, you right. know? Like, That's more like... It's real life, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's like, here it is in front of me. You kind of see how, like, you can sort of see how it was put together. Yeah, the texture the more, exactly. exactly. Yeah, so it's yeah. much more real. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, that, that weekend was super inspiring because I'm trying to think of, like, if I went to any other big shows besides that and then the Art Basel, but... I think those were the two that had like really inspired me um was just seeing them like art in that setting and then i got really into like uh just like diving it back into like art history like that i had studied back at when i was like studying for graphic design but more in like a contemporary and like modern term of it mm -hmm. like with people that are still alive that's when i had gotten into like brantley and like condo and um um trying to think of another one that was like a early oh um oh what's his name I, I have two of his books right there obviously Ralph Steadman but he's passed away but mm -hmm. um oh, I can't think of his name it's the second book he but the last are so bad <laughs> oh I, here I'd say <clears throat> Alex Party okay. um he did stuff there's like a cool video where he's like painting Shia LaBeouf's like uh <laughs> This is a old ass video too, but he's like painting Shia LaBeouf's uh, gym in his home, and but he like <laughs> makes dope. it seem like he broke in and do it, and like Shia is like acting along with him, like why are you in the gym, <laughs> dude? It's a <laughs> sick promotional, like the coolest promotional video for an artist I've seen. That's amazing. Um, but like it's more, it's way more illustrative work, although he does do paintings too, but um, like monsters and stuff, and like as you can see, like I do probably like I like like a certain darker type of art I guess All right All right yeah like the, yeah darker in terms of the theme or in terms of like the colors the theme and I guess the subjects like Ralph okay. Stadman, Alex Pardee, George Kondo it's like menacing almost right you know yeah um, totally ominous in a sense yeah should I tell my condo story real quick? I, I need to hear the condo <laughs> okay. story it's really nothing special like at all like it's it's cool like I'm like, I love that it happened. I'll always remember it. But, so I was working at Park at the time, which is a restaurant in Philadelphia as a host. So I'm walking this woman back to her table. And she was like, oh, like, I was just at an art showing. She was just, like, making conversation. I was like, oh, or I was like, oh, who for? She was like, George Kondo. Do you know him? And I was like, oh, shit, yeah. Like, I didn't even realize he had a show here. Yeah, like that's you, man? That's crazy, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was a show where he was, like, talking like it was some kind of like not ted talk <laughs> you know what year this was uh it was 20 god probably 2018 okay or 2019 so it wasn't that long ago um but anyway she was like oh george condo and i was like oh shit and she was like yeah i just saw him uh sitting outside um because we have outside tables too um and i was like no way so <clears throat> At the time, I didn't even, like, I've seen pictures of Kondo, but, like, not well enough to, like, spot him out. Like, I right. really didn't know what he looked like that yeah, well. Yeah, and he's, like, a humble average. Yeah. Like, like you know, he blends in if you <laughs> Yeah. You know how I feel. Exactly. So, I go outside, and I, like, I act like I'm just, like, checking on the tables, like, making notes of, like, if they're on entree or whatever. Yeah. But I'm just, like, looking to see, like, where he's sitting <laughs> just out of curiosity and see if he's actually there. Right. And I see him. He's with some random dude. I don't know who he was, but it was crazy. And I was just like, oh, shit, he's actually here. So I go back inside, and I'm, like, thinking to myself, like, should I say something? Like, I don't want to bother the dude. But, like, at the same time, like, I want to have this experience of, like, talking to fucking George Kondo, like, yeah. my favorite artist. So he comes inside, and uh, he actually comes up to me, and he's like, hey, where's the restroom? <laughs> And I was like, I, you know, I showed him where I like pointed it out to him. And then I was like, I actually like, I was like, you're George Kondo, right? <laughs> and he was like, yes, I am. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, like I thought so. Like, I just wanted to say like, I'm a huge fan of your work. Oh, that's awesome. um, yeah. Like, this is really cool to be talking to you right now. And I told him like specifically, I'm like a big fan of like what he did for Kanye's oh, yeah. album. I'm sure like that meant a lot to him too. Like even just seeing like his influence on like, the younger generation. True. Too, you know? True. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. But yeah. yeah. Maybe it was a cool experience for him too. But I was just like, 
kind of like in awe that I was actually talking to him. And that was, and then he was pretty much just like, oh yeah, I really, like, I appreciate that. Like, thank you. Um, and that was pretty much the extent of our conversation. And, but like, just that moment was all I needed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, I know. Like those, it's like, it reminds you that one, everyone's human. And two, that like life can be full of surprises, yeah. you know, which is like a great thing. Yeah. You know? Like totally at any moment, anything like crazy can happen right it went from like this average ass day at work and then <laughs> george called yeah, five your minutes favorite later. artist like a living legend like yeah it's crazy yeah. it's crazy that's so cool um, i've never uh yeah i don't even think i've seen george's work in person which is like really sad to say considering he's like definitely one of my biggest influences right well i don't think i don't know of anywhere that like has his like museum work right i don't think i know any but i did actually at the beginning of this year before the pandemic hit um or maybe it was the end of last year but i went with um my dallas um and noah to see his work in new york oh he had a show the, it starts with like a ska, like scars uh, scats gallery i think so that I, sounds like a little off like that's <laughs> not because that's definitely like not the hundred percent no I, something I like right. that um but yeah it was awesome seeing i know what you're person. talking though about because that had the cool wasn't that the one with like the ponytail girl on like yeah 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 the huge the huge one yeah, yeah. that was crazy okay yeah so that was my first and only time so far seeing his work that's awesome person. that's a good but, show to see that's the one i really wanted to go see um but i've seen like i've seen a lot of, not a lot, but I've seen quite a bit of Picasso. It's like the Detroit Institute of Art has mm -hmm. a few really good ones. Mm -hmm. And then I, when me and Marisa went to Venice, I saw one at the Peggy Guggenheim out there. Oh, okay. And that one was like, actually I saw two, but one was a portrait, like his cubist approach, which like you could like totally see had inspired condo like a lot right. too which was like so cool for me to see mm -hmm. it was like wow this is like all such a cycle of uh really like influence is. you know yeah um truly but yeah that yeah i yeah just seeing like those people's works in person is just so cool right um, yeah i saw a really cool um basquiat exhibit when i was studying abroad in rome Oh, in was, Rome too. Yeah, That's so cool. It was fucking awesome. It was like a dream come true. <laughs> See, I saw the one at the. Bro so that's another actually early show that I had saw that inspired me a lot. That's good that you mentioned that. I yeah. saw one of his shows in Brooklyn. Okay. Um, at the what is it? The Brooklyn Museum of Art. Out yeah. There? Oh, I remember when he had a show. Yeah, there. it was like the really, you know, obviously <laughs> the big <laughs> bus, yeah, like retrospective or exhibition or whatever it was. Yeah. Um. He had a lot of the found furniture stuff too, like looking back like with the panel doors and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I knew that. Or maybe maybe I did see that as well. Yeah, I'm trying to think what, like, what specific ones. And then a few painted garments, which I was into at the time a lot too, is like painting on um, like button up shirts or like shoes and stuff. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was just like cool to see and really inspiring at the time. And like, you know, when you're a young artist and you study Basquiat, like, it can be intimidating because yeah. he achieved so much in such a small amount of time. And right. it's like, like, he would produce so much work. Like, I forgot how many paintings he produced before he was um, 27, but I know I was watching a documentary, I was reading that, like, towards his, like, final years, he was, like, producing, like, they say, like, there's like a pattern with when before you die you like create either your best work or you create a lot of work mm -hmm. i've seen that quite a bit and picasso did the same thing i have a good book called like picasso the last years mm -hmm. like some of my favorite picasso pieces are like in his 80s or 90s you yeah. know which yeah. is like so fucking like amazing like right that's like why like i've said it before but if you don't like you don't have to like respect picasso because obviously from like what history says he's like not like the best role model or influence right but like the fact that he was able to continue to create into his 90s and like 
continue to evolve this craft is like really cool and inspiring to me. Right. Um, Which and usually like that. See, that's the thing too, because usually like I feel like you can't separate the art from the artist. Right. This is a good segue into Kanye. I know he's influenced me a lot too. Yeah, and I mean, especially when I was like, like it as cliche as it sounds, like when I was considering dropping out of college, it's like I was listening to a lot of college dropouts. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, naturally. Yeah, <laughs> naturally. You know, like I needed, like I really didn't have, I had a few, you know, like my girlfriend was supportive of the idea and I, my parents were as supportive as they can be. Um, right. Like any parent could be in, the, you know, that. Yeah. But um, it still felt like I was very much uh, by myself in that journey. Like, yeah. Because I definitely had to do things by myself, you know, like it was like all on me to make it happen. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, just like, just the creative confidence that he had uh, was just really inspiring. Um, I remember too, I would, one of the early project, earlier projects I did was I like listened to, I think it was 808s and Heartbreaks for like two weeks straight. And then I just like made a single artwork for each song. Oh shit. Yeah, you probably, like that's so old. Mm -hmm. um, you but, happen to have, do you have like pictures of it? No, so? but I did one for My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fancy too, and that's on YouTube somewhere. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. With like an edit too. Okay. And I remember that got in a book that Kanye and like Kim had gotten for Christmas. Oh, like the uh, the one like the fans put together for them? Yeah, yeah like I the remember Team Kanye that. Daily. Yeah, I remember Because I was like that. in contact with them, but nothing really ever came of that. But yeah, I mean, cool. yeah. I mean, uh, you know, despite of a loose cannon, he is. I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to do a cover one day, and I, I feel like I don't know. I, I don't. I don't even want to describe him as a loose cannon because it's just like a. That's just his ideas, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely like all over the place. Yeah. But at the same time, he seems to be like focused enough to be creating these like really innovative um projects that he's working on like the well, it seems like he's trying to help people which yeah. is like there's a lot of billionaires and millionaire artists out there that aren't trying to help people which right. i think should be talked about more yes because kanye yeah i've never really thought about that but kanye gets so much flack just for being himself like dude he paid for um He's been paying for like people's like college. Um, yeah, I George think, Floyd's daughter, but I didn't want to yeah. like properly like, or improperly say that. Right. Like, was it his daughter that he paid for her college? Yeah. But, like, no, he did. Not saying that like makes everything that he's saying legitimate, but it's like any rational person that can think for themselves should also like be able to tune that out at yeah. a certain point and not let that influence them. Right. Of course, like younger people, it can influence in the wrong way, but yeah. This own, at the same time, so can any other president, you know, it's like, right. and I don't want to talk about this too much, but it's like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like, well, shun someone like Kanye for just being a little abstract with their thinkings, but it's like, at the same time, we'll praise someone who's like, bombing other countries, like, yeah. I don't get that. No, that's, that's the thing, like, people hate him so like much. What? Like, I understand if you disagree with the guy, like, if you dislike how he thinks, like, that's understandable, I guess. I like how he thinks. Except I think he takes it too far sometimes. But, but I think he just does it for attention. So it's like, if you don't give him the attention, then you can't empower that. You right. Know? He loves the attention. Yeah. It, like, I, I wouldn't be doing what I'm, I was doing if it wasn't for his art. And right. that's... It's the same, like, with, you know, and I, I don't say that lately. It's the same, like, with other artists. Like, you know, Cuddy, like, was a huge, like, early inspiration, too. It's like... Like with music in particular, you know, it's like right. growing up, it was like Cuddy and Kanye, you know, like, yeah. I don't oh, know yeah. if that was just like part of being like a, like a white kid in the suburbs or just like I mean, growing probably. up in our time <laughs> era, you know. But it like, was the same for me, yeah. Or just like yeah. the loner kid who, with big ideas, I guess. Right. Maybe that's what it was um, in mm -hmm. that, in the, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, Kanye, like, his music gave me confidence, I feel like. You know what I mean? And just seeing... I think, too, 
when just seeing these early music videos he did and the attention to detail to those was really inspiring like seeing that runaway film when it had dropped was yeah. like like next level. that was so yeah exactly no one's dropping short films with their albums like. exactly and like when you really studied the for like the process of it it's of like how he creates and stuff it's it's inspiring yeah someone who's a huge influence like as much as kanye like within the past five years i've realized like young thug 100 percent. oh shit really? yeah like i i was just telling someone but like back in the day i was trying so hard to get a uh, cover for thug when he was doing slime season that would have been and he posted crazy. one of my drawings on his instagram with just like a caption that said in all caps coke <laughs> like cocaine i was like wait what, what? that's but yeah that's um awesome. i remember my boy at the time nico nico nice was his handle i think it's I forgot his last name. It's gonna to come to me in a sec. But anyways, he he's done a lot of like notable covers mm -hmm. and uh, design work over the days, like the Post Malone project and oh uh, the uh, part. I think he did the Party Next Door Party Pack cover too. If I'm I not feel mistaken. like I just came across his page recently with like his design work on it. He's yeah, he's you know he's been around for a while. And uh, right. when I was doing the covers. He has the, you know, obviously he was in with Post's, like, creative team because he was doing work with them. But I remember, like, the opportunity to do a project, the cover for the Post uh, dub tape that was supposedly supposed to happen. Oh, we came about, about that. And I did sketches for it, and we, like, made a cover for it. But it never happened, never went through. Oh, I had the drawings, like, over there, too, because I was cleaning out the studio the other day. Damn. Um, Wait, so you were, like, talking to... Well, I mean... I was just doing the work, hoping that it all happened, but... Okay. I mean... Oh, that's dumb. I mean, yeah, like, an early thugger drawing, <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, that's tight. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this... Yes, yeah, so we'll of course. That, I mean, that's like one of those projects that never happened, that... Pro, this would have been... <laughs> yeah, that would have been so crazy. And if you saw how like, Nico like, put it on the cover, it was just like... I don't... I forgot... I don't even know if I had saw the finished cover. Damn, dude. That would have been fire. Yeah, he was doing a lot of, like, um, like submission-based contests for his covers back in the day, too, where he just, like, tweet, like, who wants to make my cover? So, yeah. like, everyone would try to do it, like, at that time for free, like, hoping you'd get it. Right. Um, That's dope, though. I feel like more artists should do that. You know, just it is, but like, there's a lot of people that have complaints about that too, because they feel like the artist should get compensated, which I do feel like they should too. But like, right. if someone's willing to, to take the time out of their day to do that for the potential opportunities that it can like bring, then why not? True. Because you know? like, I was eager to do that growing up. Yeah. Um, well, they could they could like have people like, you know, it could be like, who wants to do my cover, and then people post like examples of their work. And then he reaches out to one and, be, and he, like, he so compensates them, you know what That's I mean? That's a better way to do it. Or even like give like people tickets to the upcoming tour, like 50 people or like, yeah. that would be so easy to do, like 100 people that yeah. submitted work, you know? Exactly. Or like give like, even if the person who made the cover like didn't get paid, but they got like backstage pass for a show or something so they could like meet him. That would be well, that's so honestly, that's another reason I kind of got out of that mm -hmm. specific industry is because I just feel like a lot of the behind the scenes people aren't valued as much and i know True. that's like a huge not like a controversy or debate but i know like producers talk about that a lot mm -hmm. music producers you know because they create a lot of the sound for like the whole sound for a song basically right you know? right um, but yeah i know what you mean yeah i mean that yeah so i mean certain moments like that um but, uh, what were we talking about before, like Kanye? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we don't have to stay on Kanye too but, much. Oh, so what I was going to say was, yeah. so basically with, um, like, Doug's been a huge inspiration just because, like, I heard about his work ethic. Like, mm -hmm. just, like, hearing how he'll, like, go in the studio with, like, nothing written and then, like, put oh, out, really? like, seven songs in the night. I don't think I ever He has, like, 10,000 songs, I heard. I I have heard that. And, like, his insane. best songs are his unreleased stuff, like... Yeah, like that. So, I mean, like I don't plan out paintings anymore. I mm -hmm. don't sketch them out at all. I do everything 
pure like uh, intuition based and expression based. Mm -hmm. It's all like an intuitive act uh, of right. creation. Is that thanks to Young Thug? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it helps, but uh, I feel like I just like realized like that was the most effective way for me to create. Right. When I, yeah, mm -hmm. I would try to, I'm too much of a perfectionist otherwise. So it's like when I have these like loose boundaries of imperfection like with that's basically what abstraction is is like aesthetically looking compositionally pleasing totally you know yeah but um yeah yeah so i guess the next thing we can hop into is like when i made my first art book mm -hmm. and that was like after those two years that i was really just in my um in my basement at the time, my parents' basement. Mm -hmm. I was just like working on a bunch of drawings. Um, just trying to find my style, my voice, uh, how I wanted to express it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I remember like, after it was all done, I was like, why? Well, you know, I made a lot of stuff I was proud of at the time. And I just wanted it all to be in like a collective like space. and I, I think it was a largely influenced too by like other art books that I was collecting at the time. Mm -hmm. Like what I mentioned <clears throat> earlier with the, I think Hebrew had an art book that I saw that was like really inspiring and then Alex Pardee. So it was like, I kind of felt like that was the next step with what I wanted to do at the time, right. you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, looking back now, like I dis not despise it, but like I just, I don't like that art as much, or I'm not as proud of it as I once were. I was more embarrassed of it now, I right. guess. It just doesn't feel like you anymore. Right. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm happy it happened, and that was, like, a fun, like, project to work on. Right. And I had great support with it, like, so, so many people. Like, I guess I that's what I need to look at is, like, the positives of it. Yeah, and um, I mean... You know, it's all in an evolution. Like I'm sure True. everyone has artwork that they can look back on and be like, "Wow, that's like not good," or not not even not good. Just like it's not up to par with what I'm doing now. Right. I guess it's just more like of a permanent physical thing. You know. Right. It's having like, a book of it. Right. So, I guess I know. Yeah, I know what you mean. But um, yeah, I mean, since then, you know, I've thought about like doing another book one day, like with like the paintings I've been doing over the past years, like with a similar thing, like with just like the rain, the journey to find my voice and then the range in my work and style since then. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I think it's good to kind of see like that growth too, you know, like, yeah, it's individually and like as someone else. Right. Yeah, from your own standpoint, so you can see, you know, where you've, how far you've come from the beginning, and then that also inspires others who are, like, struggling to make that progress. Right, yeah, yeah. and, like, certain periods or eras of those styles may speak to <coughs> certain people more, you know? Right. As opposed to just one consistent style or... Uh, totally. Different tone. things are going to speak to different people, for sure. Yeah, and so... You know, I, after the book, I guess, like, the next, like, big thing was, like, I, I had spoke about I wanted to really have a show. Mm -hmm. And for the longest time, I feel like I had pushed away having a show just because of, like, social anxiety issues. Right. And uh, just, like, being in a space with that many people and, like, all the attention on me. Yeah. Um, and just, like, I guess, like being a perfectionist I guess so like I was never like I guess I was proud of my work but I wasn't proud enough to like really like put it in a space okay. um, so that that took a while for me to get to a point where I like you know I was like in my younger to mid 20s when I like really wanted to start doing that and I felt like confident in like hey I need to do this like this right. is like something that I need to personally get over like my fear of this but like also like this just needs to happen if like if I want to reach like that next point in my career and like just my 
my craft alone you know mm -hmm. like it's important <clears throat> that like people have those experiences where they can see like a cohesive body of work you know yeah um, so yeah at the time like i remember i was like looking for gallery shows and like i was just like dming people like randomly like cold calling on instagram like like a young like totally optimistic kid like thinking like i could like get with like these like really awesome galleries you yeah know? and not knowing like the proposal process of like how you need to write like an exhibition proposal and then like send it to them mm -hmm. with like a full resume of your work and stuff right. so i mean i obviously didn't hear back from anyone for like the longest time yeah which is like why i had uh i had an idea to just like kind of take matters into my own hand mm -hmm. so like when me and my girlfriend had moved from our old uh, apartment in Detroit we had moved to a house and at first the living room was obviously completely empty before we moved in and like looked like the perfect like little like home gallery space right so we had this idea of having a show me and my friend Monica uh, Dubray and she's a Detroit artist as well and her mm -hmm. works phenomenal and uh yeah we did we decided we'd have like a show out at the living room space and we call it the living room and like i did a little promo video for it and um i remember like like that was probably one of the like most impactful shows i think obviously because it was the first but also it was like like i didn't expect that many people to show up and it was kind of like my biggest fear of like having a show in the place that I'm living in yeah, with like family and friends coming and like all this pressure and like people seeing my work, you know? Right. Um, so I was like an anxious mess before. And I just remember kind of like blacking out from like just the overwhelming nature and like social interaction of it all. Right. Just like the nerves like overtook you. Yeah. But I mean, it was a great night. Like it, like we had an insane amount of people show up um there's someone like had said that it was like the closing night of another gallery or something and they had went to that show and then they came to our show and said that there's more people at our <laughs> house gallery so That's i awesome. thought that was like wild you yeah know? Um, totally That's like just how word of mouth had gotten around and how much like the community had showed up and right. like supported so that gave me like a lot of confidence too and just seeing like friends and families and that space like proud for me but also like just like celebrating and having a good time in front of the art right that was like really cool and uh you know obviously we got full 100 percent. we didn't have to like cut a gallery disc like a uh, gallery gallery um commission cost or right. contract cost yeah um which is always nice for split. Have, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> give anyone your exactly your money and at the time yeah that was just like you know, it was like, for me, I had never sold work like that at one time, mm -hmm. like where I had like made a lot of sales like that in one night. So yeah. it was like really empowering and cool to like see like that there is people that want my work. I just kind of have to put it out there f like for people to see, you know, totally. yeah. um, just like with it is online, you know? Yeah but like actually in a physical setting. Right, and it's cool because that's something like anyone can do, you know what I mean? Like you don't need like a gallery, you can just yeah. clear out a room in your house and just invite people over, and like it's as simple as that. Exactly, and that's like largely due to, I think social networks, because we right. I was just posting on there and then word of mouth, you know, through Detroit, like Detroit's relatively like, a like a big city but like smaller in population size so it's like people do show up and support a lot when like stuff happens right um i guess yeah that's really cool the community aspect of it yeah yeah, yeah. of course um so that was cool too and i think that had opened doors to like then having my first solo show in detroit right because like then those people were able to see my work in that setting Mm -hmm. people around it and um just like hey like i can kind of like make this happen yeah. you know like i'm capable of doing it right um so that was cool because i led to like i said my first show at um uh playground detroit which actually i think 
I had gotten into a group show at first, which was really cool to be like included amongst all these like established Detroit artists, mm -hmm. you know, because for the longest time my stuff existed online and it was like all over the world, which was really cool too. But like in my own hometown, like I, I didn't have it like in galleries or like hanging anywhere. And me personally, that's something I had wanted, you know. Right. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did a few group shows and then it just like led to a solo show. Um, and at that time I was doing like pretty abstract, like kind of abstract, but more figurative work. Right. And that's when it was, the show was called Chess Moves, but yeah, it was just like the whole concept of just like, yeah, I don't know, at the time just like life just like being a game, I guess, and just like how our next move impacts like so much and mm -hmm. looking back I don't know if I like it as much, but I, I like the name. And how how long ago was this? Like this was two thousand and seventeen I think. So like obviously three years now. It it went good with like the fish because I was trying to create my own like chess pieces in the game of life. Like they were creating like these like monumental moments in their own spaces of time in the like pieces you know mm -hmm. so i wanted them to be like living statues almost okay that's cool yeah it's very cool um and what would you say has like changed since then like like in the past three years since your first show which was like such a monumental moment for you i'm sure yeah it was you know it just and then like so seeing even then like on like a gallery level or I guess like a professional level people yeah. show out and then like my work getting to like I guess bigger collectors and stuff like that and then like finally being able to make big works and like sell it like felt really cool because I'm at a point now too like where for the longest time I could only make smaller works and like big works just kind of like scared me yeah it was intimidating but now I try to go back to smaller pieces and it's it's a real challenge for me. Mm -hmm. I like the freedom and like range of bigger canvases, you right. know? Yeah. Gives you more to work with. Yeah, more to say, more to work with, more to explore. Like it's it's really sweet. Right. Um But I mean yeah, um since then I had a show in Chicago with uh a gallery called Top Down Gallery, and that was my second solo show. Okay. Which I think happened like a year and a half, a year after. Um, and that was with a gallery that had, um, uh, like, I think I was their first or second show. Same with the first one, my solo show at Playground, I was like their first or second show. Okay. So they were like relatively like new galleries, you know? Mm -hmm. um, established but new. Right. Um, but yeah, working in Chicago was interesting, just like taking my work, transporting it out there. Like me and my dad rented a truck, or like a Tahoe, and we had to like stuff it full of big canvases and then yeah. tote it out there one weekend. <laughs> and then the following weekend, I had to go back and like install it all the night before and Damn. have like a show. Um, but I'm sure it was all worth it. Yeah, it was really cool to see how um, how Chicago showed out and like came out and stuff. And uh, that was like, I mean, I was proud of my first show, but the time frame which my first show happened, like I had a month's, I didn't mention this, but I kind of had like a month's notice for my show to make a whole new body of work. Oh shit. So That's I kind of like, no like time at all. yeah, I kind of made like a lot of, but also I was like up for it and like loved that type of pressure. That's right. why I love shows like now because I find myself not chilling a lot, but like, yeah. where I'll just be like, I don't have anything really on my schedule, so I'll just be painting away. Right. And I like when I have like shows to work towards and like stuff like that. You know, I guess it keeps me like, not hustling, but yeah, on my toes or something. I don't know. Well, no, I know what you're saying. There's it's like a like competitive like nature, not like I'm competing against anyone, but like, it's like proving to myself that I can like get out and do these things you know and right i know personally like if i have like a deadline for something or like i'm making something for someone else or for like a purpose like i can just get it done like like i i still like put my all into it but i get it done like much faster than if i'm just like making art um for like myself you know what i mean right like 
if yeah. if there's some kind of like you need that pressure. Thing, yes, it's exactly yeah. just the pressure there is it's what like, does it. Yeah, I don't know what it is like, but I mean, I mean, I know it is the pressure, and but um, I don't know. It just if it, it fuels and fires me up, you know. Right. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, it like adds, like I said, like certain can, like. I was always a fan of sports growing up and I love competing, like playing video games and like I'm still like play tennis and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, like this is a chance for me to compete with myself and like prove myself like, like I'm going to give my best possible for the show and right. like kind of give it my all and then yeah. I can rest after. Yeah. Take time to like then get inspired and do it all again. Mm -hmm. um, I like that. Um, but that's, I mean after my first show like that's kind of like when i was able to go overseas for the first time me and marisa went to italy mm -hmm. and i saw some of her family out there and a bunch of museums and churches and like like i said the peggy guggenheim museum with right. uh like picasso's dolly's or mac Ern max ernst's mm -hmm. um there's a lot of pieces that i saw there but i mean that just seeing different perspectives of life and like out just outside the states like that opened whole new doors for me too to like inspiration wise like i made totally. that room was fun piece after yeah like that was like like rarely do i make works on like certain moments in my life specifically but that was like one of those that just felt so natural where yeah. I, it didn't feel forced it just happened mm -hmm. and i was like wow room was fun <laughs> Like, it was just, so, yeah, I mean, like, since then, obviously, like, we've talked with Guatemala, like, right. travel's been really influenced, but, like, having my first show and then, like, being able to sell a few works and then just kind of, like, saying, like, hey, this is, like, I want to take the time to, like, take a vacation and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, totally. November 2019. Right. The downtown 500 meetup. Yes. In Philadelphia. Yes, sir. For the second magazine. For the second magazine. Yeah. Yeah, we all met out there. And, you know, at first I was I was in a weird space because I was, like, really just, like, anxious about traveling and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I just worked myself up before certain things. But I just remember, like, it's one of those things I was so happy that had happened. Right. Because, like, going out there um, just, like, that weekend and, like, seeing these younger artists in person and meeting them in person and like hearing their stories and like even just like how i have maybe influenced them in some sort of way was like so inspiring to me right i was like wow this is like really why i started doing this you yeah. know so like honestly like that that was a huge like push for me because at the time i was not getting down on myself but i was kind of um uh, Not, I was kind of like alienating myself in a way where I felt like I, I don't know what it was. I really don't know where it was, but, um, that just like made me realize like, um, how important it is to like have that group of like friends that are artists with the same common goal. Right. Cause like I had forgotten about it for a minute and, uh, it just like, and just seeing like these younger kids like fresh take on like the industry and like like their goals for things like remind me of when I was younger. Yeah. Like, that was like uh, not too long ago, but like still like that point that I always like that really optimistic self that I was, you know, where right. I felt like, you know, all these crazy dreams could happen. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, but that's you know, that's a good spirit to have for sure. Oh yeah. yeah. It, yeah. It's great. Like, um, like I said, when I, I came back from Philly, and just, like, it was just really inspiring. It was, like, really inspiring. Yeah, so, like, wow. Yeah. Um, I, I remember for, that was a great weekend. Like, I wish we could go back and relive that, and we will in the future. Yeah, for sure. Um, But I remember, like, before you got there, because I think you were, like, the last person to get there, like, late at night or whatever, but everyone was, like, so excited to meet you. Because, you know, that you do inspire a lot of people. And, well, and I think yeah. that's why, like, I guess I work myself up in my head that I'm, like, fall short of people's expectations of me. Yeah, well, 
But they know you're just like a person, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Which is what, like, I just have to come to reality with, you know? Yeah. And that's as simple as it was. And everybody there, obviously, was really cool people. So it yeah. was just, it was a great experience. I was yeah. like, I need to go out more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that happened to you. Yeah. And yeah, we definitely need to make it happen again. And then obviously, uh, months later with the show following... Oh, right. The one we did here. The Future of Art tour. Yourself and Riley. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was um, that was another really cool experience. And that was kind of the same concept, too, of, you know, taking the platform into our your own hands and right. creating that space, you know, because I yeah. wasn't through a gallery that was just renting the space, and you guys did it and hosted us, and that just looked so well in that space, and I was, like, really proud of that. Like, yeah, that work I was really <laughs> proud of. Like, yeah, I'm it glad we could. so well in there. Yeah, it did. It looked great. And I'm glad we, we pulled that off and made that happen. Especially yeah, right before the pandemic. Seriously, yeah. Yeah, because um, yeah, that, was, that was right before everything happened. And I remember just even people coming in, like, you know, who, who had saw the ad off maybe, like, Instagram or something. Right. And then was just like completely intrigued by the AR experience. Yeah. And then like they were asking about the artists. It just it reminded me like how important, like I said earlier, those physical experiences are. Yeah. Um, yeah, I miss them so much like doing our events because it is so fun to see people like come in, especially people who just see the ad and they're like, oh, I didn't really know what this was, but it was free and I'm close, so I came. But then you know they get to see the the AR technology that Benito does and like it's like they weren't even expecting something like that and right. you know just it's really just the community aspect with just these random people is just like such a cool experience that I miss so much and I really want to get back to same it's yeah it's really inspiring um and that's like another thing too like when we had gotten back from Guatemala I was so scared with obviously everything shutting down and just like how the gallery scene works a year in advance you right. know yeah and uh, how everything's like planned out and you're already like planning your next show you know mm -hmm. but this is like the first time i don't because i had like such big plans for like my third solo show this year i have like all this work i've been making for it right um but i now have no plans for it i've just been going with the flow i kind of told you a bit like uh, just like, yeah, I've just been making pieces and selling them as they come, like if I can get what I think they deserve. Um, just trying to stay like active and productive and like, right. as I'm inspired and like feeling like in my bag, like making like the right type of like continuous work, you know, yeah. um, and just creating as much as possible. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically, where I want to take this like right now is I want to continue doing the shows and like evolving as an artist and you know fine-tuning my craft and continuing to be a student of the game mm -hmm. but also hopefully as things start to go good I can continue to like give back in certain ways mm -hmm. um, whether it's like just providing platforms for artists to like show their work uh, like a gallery one day would be like a dream or even just like like I've been trying to buy more originals from artists like right. like really small artists like yeah emerging artists that's um, cool because I know how important that is like one getting those sales early and two from like another artist it's like right it's validating in a sense and very yeah yeah no that is cool who can I ask who you've uh, <laughs> Maybe I should. No, you can. I mean, I've, okay. I've gotten a Ladon piece. I've gotten a, I think, I've picked up a Mike Soul piece. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his last name. Mm -hmm. Peter, I don't want to butcher his last Tominsky. name. Tominsky. Tominsky, me oh. and him traded pieces. Nice. Um, Monica, like I mentioned, Monica Dubray. Mm -hmm. Those are some I've picked up recently. Very um, nice. Hoping to get a rug from you soon. <laughs> so, yeah, dude. Those rugs, I gotta keep pumping them out. Yeah, man. I'm one a week. Me. One a week. Seriously. Yeah. That's how I've been trying to... I mean, the same thing with the paintings, you know? Nice. 
very nice. But yeah, I mean, just like supporting artists how I wish maybe I like would have received support in certain ways, like I said, just like selling originals or like making spaces more accessible for certain types of artists and stuff. Right. Um, and uh, I mean, it's it's tough for me though, like to to like really talk about this too when I'm still trying so hard to just like individually help myself, you know? Yeah. Because I'm still like very much an emerging artist mm -hmm. despite like cr being, I don't know, like in it for so long, I guess. Mm -hmm. This is like such a small amount in the grand scheme of things, you know? Yeah. But, um, totally. yeah, it, like I said though, I guess, I guess time will only tell, like, <laughs> yeah. Like we'll we'll see what we, what I have in plan. Yeah, I I guess it's better to lead by action too. You know. Right. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. I think that's a it's a good place to wrap things up. Yeah, I I agree. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time to do this, man. Yeah. No. Thanks for coming yeah. by, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah. It's good, good to course. have you. All right.